So let's join my talk with Swiss Beats. We address not just African-American art, but why art is significant now and how Swiss and his family collect and support the arts in this period. So to what extent does art matter now in this time of coronavirus, economic upheaval, strained race issues in America? Why art at this point? Well, I feel that um, art has always been the other language of expressing. And, you know, look at what is being painted in the street. That's an art visual. Look at what is being painted in the sky. That's an art visual. Look at what's being painted in our hearts and our minds. Those are art visuals as well. And I feel that um, art has always been important, especially when you're going through confusing times and sad times and trying times. Art, for some reason, um, it just gives life. Um, whether it's visual arts, whether it's music, it just gives people some inspiration to stand on that everybody can uh, relate to um, just from looking or just from hearing. And so I think it's pretty powerful during this time. I think that we're going to actually witness a lot of new artists coming from this time as well, you know, because a lot of artists got a time, got a chance to sit back and take a lot of things in and, and, and say, you know what, I have time, I can't go nowhere. Let me, let, me, let me apply this method, whether it's music, whether it's art, whether it's writing, you name it, whether it's photography. I think out of all of this is gonna come so many new artists and the artists that we already know, I think that it just made them go, and go back in and charge their batteries up again. I thought post-Trump, post-election, we would see sort of a bigger impact of that in art making. And I didn't really see it. Maybe I'm more in the established part of the art world and the art business. I kind of thought I would see more artists addressing it. Maybe they were like reacting towards beauty, towards a, uh, a personal feeling. Do you feel that now it's a bit different than that of four years ago? Um, as far as artists responding to what's going on, I feel that, I don't feel that it's as high as I thought it would be. You know, I thought that it would be a lot of more artists speaking up louder, to be honest. But, you know, when, when times get real like this, artists kind of duck low, regroup, kind of watch the landscape. Um, a lot of people are, are posting, but... I'm talking about, you know, activations, but then also there's not also, um, can't really go out and do those activations you might want to do. You know, and a lot of people might not be savvy on how to do it online. A lot of people might not understand how to go out there. Maybe they feel like they, they're risking their life because, you know, everything that's going on. So I, 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 I see a lot of artists being uh, quiet during this time, to be honest. Your talk on um, your TED talk, on creativity I thought was really powerful and poignant. John and Mark, I really recommend you go and watch it. Is there a way you. you synthesize that in a, in a little bit of what you were expressing with so much emotion at that time? It's what I really feel, you know, coming from music and starting from the Bronx, not really understanding business, not really understanding any market, art market, fashion market, music market. I just understood creativity and having fun. And then I realized that a lot of artists' rights were different than the rights that I have as an artist. You know, like I get paid royalties, I get um, publishing, and my work is a continuous activation in my life. Like I live with, with my work since I've started it um, at 18, 17, 18. And to know that an artist painting, once that artist painting leaves them for that one time price, that's that's it. I just didn't I just didn't think that that's I just don't think that that's fair. You know, um, that's been an argument that's been going on for 40 or 50 years about artists resales. I happen to love your sentiment for it. I think it only serves mostly the rich artists who've already succeeded and not the other three million artists there, in fact, it might suppress the desire for people to buy their work. 
I like the sentiment of it. I'm not sure that that's really the solution, but it's like, it's more of a baseline transaction. I give you this painting, you give me X dollars, a little different than I'm hearing you on the radio, I'm watching you on the show. I mean, this is to be a full show just on that discussion. Yeah. I mean, with the Dean's choice, it's just the start is definitely not the end all solution. But my thing is, you know, let's start somewhere. I also have technology for the masses that are not um, trading at auction and these different things, which, you know, is called smart collection, um, you know, which is which is based off of no commissions as well. Uh, my art, my, 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 my platform and um, it's more educational based and it's, and it's more about sustainability, like how to depend on yourself to get the results you want. And, you know, yeah, you can use a gallery. You can use whatever you want, but have the tools you need to make that decision proper. You know, not just by default because it's the thing to do and everybody say it's cool, you know, understand why it works for you so you can then negotiate uh, better terms. You can negotiate things that, that you're happy with. And I feel that they both play a part. You know, the Dean's Choice at auctions play a part. That's, you know, uh, it's your choice whether you want to be a patron of the arts or not. Well, I like your phrase of patron of the arts. It's like in this lockdown period, how have you been affected as a collector because you are a major collector or and or as a patron of the arts, which is, I think, a key component of what you've done. You see those separately or together, and how have you been, you know, in the five months you've been locked up at home with your family, looking at art online? Have you been more activated, less, and in which way? Well, I've been I've been more activated with um, up and coming artists that I know that these times are really hard on them. So I've been uh, supporting a lot of up and coming young artists that was just about to get to that next level and then COVID hit and um, it just kind of stopped a lot of their plans. So I've been, I've been doing, doing those type of things. Um, then at home, I created something called Versus, which is a musical celebration uh, that brings two artists together to celebrate each other with hits. And um, that's been massive. We won a Webby Award off of it. Um, just got a BET Acknowledgement Award off of it as well. And, um, you know, getting over a billion impressions per episode. Um, and it's been, it's been good because what it's been doing was raising awareness on artists that people forgot about, musical artists that people forgot about, raising their catalog streams, raising their identity, introducing them to this generation and also connecting them with this generation. So now, you know, you have a, a amazing artist like Babyface teaming up with a younger artist to make some new magic. And it was something that I just started out of fun and now it turned into, you know, a partnership with Apple and you name it. Um, what do you make of the explosion of the last few years of the collecting of black artists or African-American artists in particular, and the effect of the auctions on them, on their gallery, what's going on. I, I will say that's an area I've been active in for over 30 years mm. myself and, and following that. And it resonates to me, but how do you feel about what's going on, particularly as we're talking about the auction world, to some degree of... I mean, I feel like I was a part of that also. Um, bringing awareness to, to 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 this side of the demographics and you know with no commissions and giving people the entry point and you know making making purchases public you know on purpose when usually I would be more quiet about my purchases I was like you know what people should see these purchases and, and these these records being broken these things to know that it's okay for us to support our culture you know and. It's great that the change of, of black supporting black culture, women supporting art by women. I remember sitting, oh. standing in Sotheby's, what was it, a year or two ago? You were in the front row, I think, maybe 10 feet from me. And then the Carrie James Marshall that sold for over 20 million, that I'm sure you had a lot to do with that. I mean, yeah. that's the significant change. Yeah. Yeah. And I bought the Lynette that day as well. I mean, it was a big night. It was a big night. And, um, 
the market hasn't went down since that night, you know, not that I've noticed. And, you know, the thing is, just keeping the momentum, but I'm not just a collective African and African American art. I'm an art collective, period. You know, I have uh, a very diversified portfolio in our in the Dean collection, but I just wanted to focus on that area because a lot of my peers weren't focusing on that area like they should. And I would go to other people's houses that weren't directly in the culture. And I would be thrilled at their collection. And I'm like, man, like, you know, we don't even have none of these things in our collection and we're chasing the wrong thing. And um, I just wanted to change the narrative a little bit, but you know, when I do interviews, they, they always like to use the word, you know, one of the biggest African American black collectors and all those different things. I don't look at myself as that. I look at myself as a patron of the arts and the collective period, although I ramped up in, in, in African and African American arts in our collection because we just didn't have enough. Well, it becomes interesting when an artist like Sam Gilliam is placed in that. And Sam has made a point of saying, I'm an abstract artist. I'm not a black abstract artist. And it's like, I get tired of seeing a press release from a gallery. We've just signed a black artist, a woman artist. I don't see any press releases saying, we just signed this white artist. So exactly. I think they're like being forced into categories when the main category is artists. 100%. Fame and music, if I love Eminem or I love, you know, Lucia Keys, you know, it's like yeah. they're both great musicians. And I'm hoping that we get to a place that, you know, I think it's taken this moment in the collecting. We need to get the place perhaps for the infrastructure of the art world and the art business is more. I agree. And that'll be the time when that discussion becomes a little less forced. Yeah, it shouldn't be a box checked. It should be something that is being done because it's supposed to be done, you know? And, 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 and that's why those titles, that's why those titles are coming up because people want, want other people to know that, you know, they're doing the right thing. Um, well, if you're doing the right thing, just do the right thing, you know, and don't, don't, don't put artists and people in boxes because sky's not the limits, it's just the view, you know, there's footprints on the moon supposedly. So why should the skies be our limits, you know, um, or anybody's limits? And I just feel that that small mind thinking and I feel that, you know, whether you collect from wherever you collect, you're a, co you're a collector, you're a patron of the arts. It's not, not, I'm not a black collector. Like, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> you like saying, I bet if I put on a, I don't know, George Jones song, you would dig it, right? You would say, that guy Absolutely. could sing. You know, okay, it's country music or you know, the same way if I'm hearing whatever, it's like, I think we have to train our ears and our eyes to look a little more broadly. In that I way. agree. So I agree with, that that. Mind, with this auction coming up, and we're kind of like the NFL today, this show, the Hammer, it's like, you know, if you could channel your, are you a football fan? Not right now. Not a Jets <laughs> fan like me or something. To channel yeah. your inner Phil sense and sort of pick an artist from this sale coming up that either you have your eye on as a work of art, you think the market might react to out of this sale. It doesn't um, have to be a black artist either. Um, well, what's your top five in the sale? Well, geez, then I'm going to go David Hammonds because I've been a fan I like of that him. piece. I like, I like that piece. That, that's a good piece. I mean, the it's rock small, hatch probably piece, is the most piece. collectible piece. Yeah. And I've been looking to work close to 30 years. Um, wow. The Ruche is kind of like much better in person than it is on the screen. Um, yeah, the Ruche was, was amazing too. But name one. Do you have one that's in mind that's maybe I mean, so obvious? I'm a Lynette fan always. Um, a moment for women artists too, right? Yeah, yeah, big, big moment, and and me and my wife definitely been supporting supporting that side, and I feel like in our collection, we want to have equal males and females in in, in the collection. Um, that's something that we work, we really pride ourselves on is having the collection represent, you know, almost fifty fifty, if not fifty fifty, or if not, you know, 
Well, one day you mom's work. She has a big show at Pace in the fall, a show at Dia in the spring, that shows at the Whitney. So I was raised yeah. by women artists. So Yeah, you see, I got pink on right now. Okay. <laughs> you, know, you can handle it, you know. <laughs> so it's been great that you're joining. Thank you for watching this extended version. And please check out all the extended versions that are both on YouTube and on our website.